going to uh, show myself inking this drawing. So wait a minute, I gotta do it this way. I'm gonna do it this way. If I can move this around so people can see. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see enough there. Let's see if I can move this around a little bit. Up. It's kind of sideways, so I don't know if that works or not. But you know, it's free. You don't have to watch. I mean, geez, if you're gonna sit there and criticize me because of the angle, that's on you. Uh, so yesterday I penciled this train. It's for Frisco Tattoo. They're going to make uh, silk screens out of this and promotional stuff. So I basically inked a lot of the technical stuff yesterday. Uh, you can see that right there. There's a lot of stuff on a train. It's kind of complicated. I've got to ink um, the rest of the front of the train. And then the clouds. The last time I did one of these, uh, Instagram decided to boot me off and I didn't know it. And I sat here for like an hour talking to myself like a fucking goon. Um, so I don't know if that'll happen again or not. Who knows? It's a mystery. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna sit here and draw and uh, talk to you and know that I may ultimately just be talking to myself. But that not that what we're all doing? You know, we're just talking to ourselves nonstop. Uh, thanks, Frisco. And, uh, you know, we think we're talking to other people, but they're just waiting for us to shut the fuck up so they can talk to themselves about themselves again. So I'm going to draw and talk to myself. And uh, it's really cold. And I'm sitting on a metal stool at my drawing station, and my ass is so cold right now. But uh, I have heat in my house, so I'm not going to complain. It's just we turned it down because we don't want to be power hogs. We realize there's issues with people not having enough power, so we're trying to be respectful and keep it turned down. You know, try and live simply so others can simply live. That's our motto. Beefing up some of those lines there so the weight's a little better. And uh, it's really exciting stuff. Uh, a lot of you may get more out of this when I'm drawing the clouds because that's going to be a little more like interesting looking. I don't know. Right now it's like me moving a ruler around. It's not too exciting. What I do a lot of times is uh, I work thin to thick. So I will... Uh, kind of line in thinner lines. Uh, it's a pen I enjoy quite a bit. Um, I agree with your grandmother, Pulp Americana. I think, I talk to myself and I'm like, if you want to judge me for it, you'll fuck yourself. If you're so well adjusted and lucky that you never talk to yourself, I guess bully you. But, uh, but I talk to myself sometimes. Uh, I like this pen. It's a Kurataki pen. I forget the name because they have all their stuff in... Uh, Japanese here, but the tip is somewhat um, rigid, so it's kind of like a pen, but then you can push on it and make it like a brush, which is kind of handy, so it's like I can do different line weights, and I can do feathering lines with it well. The end here is just like a big, it's supposed to be like a brush, but it sucks. I really just use it for filling in dark areas. I don't like the line it makes. Um, this is a pen I use for some thick to thin lines. It's kind of like a fountain pen. I wish somebody would make like an old school crow quill pen for inking that just has a cartridge. And so far I haven't found one that actually works right. And then I've got these static line white pens I use for some things. Um, and then if I'm doing a drawing with a lot of brush, I have like a pocket brush. And uh, people ask about brushes a lot, so that's why I'm bringing this up. This is another Kurataki I like. It has a uh, blunter tip 
it doesn't look like it here because it actually comes to a point but the ink flow on it comes out a little more generous so sometimes, sometimes when I'm making like big fat lines or something I'll, I'll use it so I have a few different ones I use and it changes all the time too like I um, I'll get sick of something or the line and I'll do something else or for a while I was uh, I've kind of been in a mode where I'm using a pen a lot and I uh, a few years back was using like my my pocket brushes for everything and then just using pens for like more mechanical static lines and uh, I, I kind of go back and forth I kind of like using both I think the thing I worry about with using a pen all the time is it um, being too neurotic and you know, trying to over render a little bit because you have more control with a pen than you do with a brush and so part of the good things with a brush is it forces you to abstract more because it's a brush it has a you know a flatter bigger delivery system for ink so it doesn't want to just let you like draw every little thing and that's that's a big thing with me is uh realizing how much the way I'm drawing affects what I draw. And so I have to kind of account for that. For instance, uh, I will sometimes draw something and hate it. Uh, I usually hate everything I draw the first time. Um, but, but I'll draw something and I'll hate it. And I'll come back later and realize oh, I'm drawing it too big. And then just changing the size of it forces me to see it differently and stops me from maybe overdrawing certain things I shouldn't. And uh, it's kind of a pain, but that, that is part of the psychology of it, I guess. Um, that's the Frisco logo. I'm just freehanding on the, on the, I'm trying to draw and think while I talk, on the drawing, but then the actual design, I'll probably just put the vector of the logo in there so it'll look cleaner. It still won't look just pristine. It's going to be a something that's printed and reproduced. Sometimes I have to fight the urge to look up and see who's joining in. Um, I don't use my ruler on everything either. I may use it in certain areas where I think it's more important, but I don't necessarily want the drawing to look like super mechanical. So. Um, I'll kind of use it in different ways. Sometimes I'll just kind of use my hand and get as close as I can to it being straight. Like, like in other words, is it perceptually straight? That's enough. It doesn't have to be like mechanically straight or just super tight. And uh, I do a lot of work in Illustrator, which is a design program, and you can make things in there just kind of perfect. And it's a bit of a problem for me because I get neurotic and you're like cleaning up lines like crazy and taking maybe the life out of something so I, I do think it's kind of important to like keep myself in check that's part of the reason I haven't gotten on board with the digital drawing trend is uh, I like having the artifact like when I'm done with this I have this nice drawing that someone can enjoy like my grandkids someday could have it I can sell it someone can have it in their home and enjoy it and uh, also the the limitations of the physical you know the paper you choose and the ink you choose and all that stuff really affects your your choices and I think that's really important and it affects the way the, the work looks and uh, and you and you can go into the digital realm and do all that I mean there's nothing that stops you from doing it I just I don't know. I, I like having this, and I think a part of me doesn't mind being the last holdout. If I'm the last guy still working on paper and ink, that's okay with me, as long as I can get the work done. But I do think I need to... I've used it a little bit for creating textures. So basically, the, the graphic design part of my job, where I normally would take a mouse and do it, well, I can sit there on my tablet and do it. And that makes sense. And the brushes they have now are so good. So I do think I need to transition to doing more of my coloring and, and texturing that way. And it also would give me a lot of freedom. 
I could sit on my couch with my wife and, and work and not feel like I'm by myself again because I'm by myself all the time and it sucks. And like when my wife comes home, I don't want to think, well, I need to go back in my room and be isolated more. So that's the good thing about digital is you can kind of move it around on your tablet and do it in different places. So I will take my straight edge as I'm doing here. I'm just going around and filling some basic straight lines. There's some areas where I'll probably just eyeball straight lines when I'm getting my framework. I'm a lot more careful about using a ruler if I have something really mechanical like this at the beginning because you know when I'm penciling it, you have to line out like your grids, try and get perspective correct, stuff like that. Well, when you're inking, that's there. So if you do it by hand over it, um, I'm not saying just be crooked and don't try and be straight, but but if you give yourself permission to say, well, it doesn't have to be just this mechanically pristine thing. It can look straight, but it, the line has a little more life to it. And uh, every once in a while I look up and I see like who's here and who's not. It's interesting like uh, how that works. Uh, yeah, and if you stick around, um, I'll probably talk to myself long enough, I'll say something offensive. So that, that's entertaining. Or I'll uh, streak my neighborhood out in the cold, maybe. Got, got to do anything to get those hits. Got to keep the hits up. But yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. I'm just... Ruling in lines. Just take my ruler, draw lines. This ink dries pretty quickly, so if I pause for a second or so, I can go back over an area. So in my head, I, you just kind of get like a little internal clock where I'm like, I think I'm good. But I do get streaks, and I do make mistakes, and that's why I have pro white. I have a line here I gotta white out. Um, I do like the physical artifact to look good. I sell them. I have a a saint, is what I would describe him as. A guy that bought three or four of my originals last month and uh, really came in handy and needed the money, so it was great. Um, wish more people buy originals, but I get it. They're expensive. They're not that expensive if you consider how much time it takes to draw this shit. And, uh, it's the only one on earth, but still, it's two to three hundred dollars is not cheap, cheap. Which is why I make prints and stuff. So there are cheap ways someone can buy something if they want. I have a lot of new t-shirts and prints planned. Um, if you're a member of the, my t-shirt subscription club, you get one every month. But there's a lot of other stuff outside of that I'm developing that I haven't announced yet. A whole new uh, line, a b new brand. It's going to be re the return of something old and in new form is the tease. And it's going to be something very different to normal big bot stuff, but still me and still things I've, I've done, but I've never done it quite this way. And I actually had an email today that was very positive about a collab, a local collaborator that I think will be very cool. And I'm very excited about and, uh, I think, I think it's going to be a fun kind of, uh, not turning point, but addition to what I'm doing. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm excited about making time to make this stuff. I'm very excited that, like, Frisco Tattoo, Justin reached out and hired me for this. I need good local projects and clients. It's good uh, money and good projects. These are things I'm proud to show people, which is kind of the perfect work. When you can do something that you would want to put in a portfolio and you're proud of it, that's pretty good. So thank you. So I'm close to having most of my straight lines here ruled, or ruled enough. 
probably shouldn't admit this when uh, the client could be watching, but I intentionally, when I pencil this, I try and be really careful about getting my facts right. There are actually a few questions about, there's a actual picture of a train this is drawn from. And there were some questions I had about some things in the picture that weren't clear to me. So I try and get all that right. But then when I get to the inking part, I kind of, I don't kind of, it, I with intent, forget it. Because at that point, like I said, I'm not looking for this to be, this is supposed to be a nice drawing, not a manual. This isn't something going in a manual that someone's going to work from. It does not have to be, in, in my opinion, it does not have to be technically perfect. It has to look believable, which is not the same thing. So when I get to this stage, I kind of, I still have my reference picture off to the side. You can't see it, but it's there, but I don't really look at it as much. And I treat it almost like I'm an inker in the old school comic book system. Like the penciler gave me these pencils, I'm doing it. Here's what I'm drawing. If I see something wrong, I fix it, but I don't go overboard. And the reason for that is, like I said, I want the drawing to have life and be interesting, not if it's technically perfect, it doesn't matter as much, in my opinion. At this stage, I'm, I'm letting myself focus on, does my line work look good? How's that shading going? My light sources, am I being uh, accurate with my light sources, and more importantly, interesting with them? Because even that, you don't, in my opinion, have to be super accurate. You have to be interesting more than accurate. Close to being done ruling things. Yesterday was a big ruler day. Big ruler day. Lots of ruling. Ruling all over the place. Made a, made a big, big inky mess. I had ink on my fingers. I love it when I have ink on my fingers at the end of a day. It feels like I'm actually an artist doing something, I'm not just sitting at a computer all day. Which honestly feels a little soul crushing to me at this point in my life. Because most of my life I've done a lot of that. I'm kind of sick of it. So sometimes I will take a piece of paper and I will. Um, Hey there, key to art. So this, I'll go back over pens. So this is a Kurataki. I don't remember the name off the top of my head because it's, you know, it's got Japanese on it. Um, it's got a static line here that's not really that static. You can push on it, do thick to thin, which is part of what I like about it. Um, the end, I don't like. It's just like a brush. It's kind of crap. I just use it to fill in. This is a um, Tradio. It's kind of like a, like a, Fountain pen, I can do thick to thin on that. I use it for stuff. There's another Kurataki I like. It's a little more blunt in the edge it puts down, the mark. Um, that's what I'm using on this drawing. I have other ones I use. I use different things on different projects all the time. Um, I do try to occasionally remember to put a piece of paper under my hand so I don't get my grubby mitts everywhere. Uh, some artists, like real serious um, pen and ink artists. I'll watch their stuff online and they, and they will actually have like fancy um, gloves on when they're drawing to avoid getting grease on the paper because your greasy mitts will, shit, that's made a bad line. Made a bad line. Um, your greasy mitts will get on there and when you try and put an ink line down, it, it's kind of like there's oil you know and it wants to push the ink um, better pens don't do that as much and you can also smudge it that's a issue if you use an old school like pen and ink tools I can't imagine it's as big of an issue I think they have to be doing it more because they're concerned about smearing ink because uh, if you're using something that lays down like really heavy India ink I mean I've done that too I just don't like the tools because they're a pain 
um, but it's laying down heavy enough ink that you're not the 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 grossness of your hand is not going to repel it. I mean that ink's legit. It goes down. It's legit ink, man. It goes down. It goes down hardcore, bro. But those tools kind of suck, um, I think, because you have to do so much back and forth with them. And uh, I don't know. There's just a part of me that's kind of lazy enough, I guess, that I just want to... Like you can see as, as I'm sitting here drawing, I'm doing the bulk of this with one pen. And I switch back and forth, but I'm not switching back and forth all the time because I just like sitting here and drawing. So I tend to... I tend to try and manipulate the tool to allow me to not have to change what I'm doing more than the other way around. So drawing like this is very technical. Um, and so, like I was saying before, a, a big thing to me is trying to fight against that. So finding areas you can add a little style or something. So, and this pen too, I don't know if you can see it that much, but uh, right here, I was able to hold down and make it fat and go thinner. I'll do that again right here. So the same tip that was giving me a pretty good static line up top, well, if you hold it more upright, it stays pretty static, but then you've got an edge you can like hold on to and you can also push it so right here, I'm gonna push down and make it fat and then pull out and let it go thin. So I'm gonna hold down and go thick to thin. 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 I did it, thick to thin, like uh, six times. Thick to thin. Everybody, uh, Thanks, Wolf Tooth. Um, I try not to think about time because uh, I'd cry. Um, no, um, some of this goes a little quicker than you might think, but yeah, it does take a long time. And then, um, thick to thin, thick to thin, thick to thin, thick to thin. So there's some more thick to thin. So I'm picking some spots in here to do some things that are a little more stylized so that it offsets the technical nature of the drawing. You know, I don't want it to look like it's just outlines and stuff, so I'm picking some little areas. Um, it's a lot of time. I probably spent, I really do try to not think about it because it, um, because I don't care that much. I'm just, I care about if I can get my, my day rate met overall and pay myself. That's the main thing. Um, but gosh, I probably spent, Penciling maybe three or four hours, something like that. And then the inking yesterday, two or three hours. So probably by the time everything's said and done, I'll maybe have the equivalent of a, not a work day, but you know, six hours, something like that, seven hours. Maybe more. I and it varies. There are times um this one's gone pretty well, so it hasn't been a problem. Sometimes I'll do something and uh, just because I'm real picky and uh, the more I do this, the pickier I get. So in a, in a way, I almost feel like I'm, well, I don't feel like I am getting slower because I just don't want to be in a hurry. I want to do something I really like. Um, but anyway, I've worked in fields where I've had to do a lot of production art. And you're just cranking stuff out and there are times you have to put something out and you really get good at developing a thick skin and just saying, oh, that, that works, that's fine. But it sucks because you know something could be better and you know you could do better. Some of that discipline is good though. It's not, you know, you need that sometimes to be able to quit being self-indulgent and just say that you're being neurotic, stop it. Like you have to do that as an artist all the time. Um, but anyway, I when I do something like this, well, I'm not working at someone else's company making a t-shirt or something where if it's not just perfect, I can go, well, it's not that perfect, but the client liked it, so it's fine. I mean, you're all seeing it. Um, I'm going to post it. I want to be proud of it. So that's part of it. 
Um, I get pickier because it's me. I'm somewhat represented by it. And, uh, but I like that. I want to feel like that. I don't want to feel like I'm just doing stuff that doesn't matter. The, the world's full of plenty of crap that's made just to sell other crap. And I'm not the guy to do that. I've done it and I don't care about it. So you all go have a good time doing that. Leave me out of it. I like making things for human experiences or, you know, like the Experience Fayetteville maps I made. I'm really proud of that. Um, they look cool. I like them. Uh, there was a lot of work in it that I'm proud of. Like it wasn't easy. But then people can use it and interface with it. And it's part of my community. So that makes me feel good. So that feels like kind of the perfect way of doing creative work. You're sort of... Uh, Getting to do something you're proud of, you're getting paid for it, and it's something people can use and like, and it doesn't feel like a crass exchange, like, you know, I just made something to sell something and that's it. Nothing wrong with selling stuff, though. I, I sell stuff all the time. Speaking of, all orders on my site are uh, free shipping. Any purchase over $40, you get free shipping. So there's my commercial. That's it. I do have a lot of new stuff coming on my site soon, though. So this pen, like, sometimes I'll do, like, I want this to be a little darker here. I can hold it on its edge, kind of squish it. You know, give me some nice little lines I like. Uh, I try to pick some spots where, like I was mentioning, I don't want to be super technical. I want it to look accurate and be believable. I'm not looking for it to be a technical drawing. So here I'm not ruining anything. I'm just taking my hand, just kind of drawing it, even the circle here. I've got some elliptical guides, um, but I don't think it has to be like super perfect. It just has to look round. I mean, it's like a big hunk of iron, right? It's a big giant hunk of iron. It was made, you know, it was tooled. They had molds and stuff. So I'm not saying it wasn't circular, but I mean, it's a physical big ass thing. It's not, um, you know, if you had if you had this in a computer, you can just take the elliptical tool, just make a circle, right? But things in the real world aren't a perfect little vector circle. They're physical objects that are beat up, pounded. Um, you know, so I, I I think it's better if you let yourself kind of calm down about it and just say, well, let's make this look accurate and look believable, but don't worry about it being too perfect and my background in, in screen printing I would get in phases like that where I could like I said I could get an illustrator open up the program I could zoom in on things and I had a stretch like it's a long time ago this isn't recent but I would do a drawing and I'd almost redraw it in the computer every time because I could zoom in and see every little point and it would just drive me up a wall. And uh, it definitely got became like a weird neurotic thing where you were making something look just perfect, but then it was kind of lifeless because it, you're making it look too perfect, too machined. Which I don't think is really the point. And most things you look at, like drawings or something, even the ones I like, I mean, they don't look perfect. So it's a weird thing you get if you're an artist. Other artists out there know what I'm talking about, where it's uh, more like your stinks on it. And so your weird issues with yourself are coming out. So you're looking at it and seeing flaws or you're insecure. And you're... Just sure this is the time people are gonna realize you suck and don't have any ability. And it's just all these little weird fears you have. And so some bizarre quest for perfection kicks in and you start um, making yourself nutty. And the artists that you love, when you look at their work and you love it, you're probably not thinking the same thing at all. You're not saying that 
line so perfect or the something you might notice that's bothering you, you would not notice with them. Uh, you're probably extending a lot of grace to them. You're not extending to yourself. Which uh, is not great. But it is a fine line because you don't want to just tell yourself everything you do is great because it's not. And you have to hold yourself accountable. This pen's getting a little shitty, so I'm going to open a new one. Yeah, fresh pen smell. Mmm. Um, yes, JCB, I, I probably need to make like a tea that says <laughs> all your stink on it. But, but uh, you know, people probably won't take it the way I mean it, but maybe that's, <laughs> that's okay. Or uh, I accept my own stink or something, I don't know. But that is a fucked up thing you do if you're an artist. And uh, the truth of the matter is you, every artist had like their parents or their mima or somebody that told them like, you're just so talented and I'm so proud of you, but you knew you weren't because you had, if you have any, no, oh, that's a lot better lines. I'm glad I switched pens. Um, if you have any talent, I mean, part of that talent's probably having an eye. You're able to look at things and kind of like respond to it and feel this drive to want to be it. So that same eye is making you aware when you're falling short. So when your Mima tells you, you know, how great you are, you're like, thanks, but I know I'm not. And it, it's frustrating. So you have this like push pull of like, I think I could be good at this, but I know I'm not. And you have to have a drive to push yourself. But then that same drive unchecked can make you nuts where you're making yourself crazy and you're never able to do anything well enough and blah, blah, blah. Before you know it, you're just like navel gazing so hard that you're, it just starts feeding narcissism, basically. Just, it's, it's a form of making yourself self-important, being angsty about it and your process and all the kind of creative garbage you can hear people say. It's true, but like the tone of it sometimes can be garbage. Like at the end of the day, it's a craft and you have to like pursue your craft and work on it. Just like somebody who's a carpenter pursues their craft. And it's, I think, important to remind yourself of that once in a while. But I'm all for pushing yourself to get better. I don't understand why people, your time is so limited. I don't know why you wouldn't want to try and, I'm not saying don't be happy, but make yourself I'm into music, I wanna be good at music, so why not work on it? And why not try and be as good as you can be at music and enjoy the pursuit of being good at music or drawing or whatever. There are people that I actually resent who get really great opportunities to do stuff and they just kind of blow it or they don't care and I do not get it because that's what most of us who are creative are just dying for. Like, man, if I could just spend every day working on my own stuff and not chasing money or having somebody that doesn't know the first thing about what I'm good at, tell me how to do it. Or, I mean, it's kind of all you're wanting if you're passionate about art. If you could just find somebody, just let you do it. I didn't go out on my own because I was just dead set on being on my own. I went out on my own because I never really could find anybody that would use me the way I knew I knew it would be used. And that's because they have their own business and model they have to follow. Their business model is not Chad being fulfilled. That's my business. But when you're in the process of doing creative work commercially, it's really hard because people don't know what they're doing. And you're usually being managed by salespeople who just want to sell stuff or marketing people who just want to market stuff. And they really don't know what it is you're doing. You're almost in a weird way in some of these areas. Better off if you don't really care much. You get punished a little bit if you're into it too much or it matters too much. It's 
So now I'm, I'm uh, doing some kind of like shading work in different areas that I indicated uh, in my pencils. I need a bigger drawing area because I got shit rolling around everywhere. It's very annoying. A good friend um, who passed made this table for me. I don't want to get rid of it. I really like it, but it is a little too small. He made it to my spec, so it's, that's my fault, not his, but uh, I do wish it was a little bigger. But it's a light table. I started off my graphic design career working in print shops and always had light tables because this was before everything was done on the computer. So you, this was the early 90s, like the olden days. So you would do stat work. You'd cut out film. The computer was just there basically just to lay out text. You know, the first couple of years of my career, that's how it was. And I kind of miss it. If you could just make art for fun that way that's how I'd make all my stuff because you get all these weird little happy accidents where uh, light reacts funny in the dark room you'd go in the dark room and you'd shoot your work and I mean you would just lay stuff out go shoot it um, you had to make you had to be more thoughtful about what you were doing because there was so much labor so the structure of design was good which is part of why I'm so biased on mid-century design because it was it was expensive. You couldn't just go into a computer and just screw around like you can now. And I mean, you can go on now to like Canva or something and have zero talent and lay something out that to the layman looks okay. I mean, someone like me would look at it and realize it's probably garbage, but you know, if you're only needing garbage work, who cares? And that's how a lot of design has become and I don't like it. And so, uh, it's fine for those purposes, I guess, but I ain't going to do it. And I don't think anybody that takes design seriously should be okay with it. But at any rate, it made it, at that time, it did, it, it can still be an art form. It is an art form. But it's very often just like literally making cheap garbage sausage and just how do we convince someone to pay us a ton to make really shitty sausage. And uh, there's a lot of those gigs out there. And they're good jobs for some people, but man, it's kind of fucked up too. As though there's not enough things in our culture that are just for straight up garbage. Must everything be for sale for crap? good thing about the technology evolving is you know you don't need a gatekeeper to let you make stuff like I can just be on my own uh, promote stuff online I need to concentrate here I'm about to fuck something up um, and you can you know you can do it so that, that's a good thing I think that's cool but Man, there's a lot of stuff out there that exists just for, like, making the most pointless garbage. Or some idea that you're supposed to be feeding this algorithm nonstop. Like, I post online. I like it. I like talking to people. I'm not against it. Um, I guess in some fields it's necessary. I, I don't know. But... Man, is it kind of gross and dehumanizing that everything's supposed to be like some kind of metric and you're supposed to be proud if you figured out how that metric is working right now. It's like, why do you want to know that and who gives a shit and it's going to change in five minutes and don't you want to be more than that? I don't know. It just seems weird to me. And especially like when you're in a creative field or you had aspirations to be creative okay, you're just into numbers and metrics now? Like, awesome. That's what a lot of this thinking is with a lot of this stuff now, is just some idea of how you feed a metric to try and get eyeballs on the thing you're doing and no real thought to what's the actual point of this or what's the relationship we're cultivating or anything. It just becomes kind of like a gross pursuit of numbers. All right, so now I'm filling in dark areas. I got this pen 
that does put out like a more generous line. Um, it's good for areas where I'm trying to like, like, like this is behind the grill. This is the front part of the train that bounces in everything. Runs over your grandma and all that stuff. Um, well, you're seeing the lines behind it, the shadows behind it, where you'd see the, the, um, the wheels on the other side, the round things. So I don't want that to look just perfect. So I'm just sort of taking this and drawing kind of like sketchy lines and that allows it to maybe hopefully give the illusion that it's uh, moving, you know, light's not just sitting there in one place. You're sort of seeing it in different uh, ways as it goes through something, looks blurry. So maybe it gives it a little bit of that vibe. If not, it just keeps the boring, uh, the line from, the drawing from looking too boring. I don't want it to look like a coloring book where everything's like a static line, kind of dull. So there's that too. So, so now I'm going through and I'm inking some of those spots. Like things like this are a good example. Well, I don't want those lines to be just solid black. I want to give the feeling of some texture, you know, like it's, maybe it's iron, you know, it's been beat up. Um, lights hitting it in different ways. I want it to be uh, evocative of something real, but not be hung up on being literally in a dull way real, if that makes sense. Makes sense to me. I guess that's the only person that's going to make sense to, am I right? But, you know, I'm going to fill in some blacks here. I'm going to fill in some blacks. Doing blacks. And I think a good drawing should have uh, good blacks in it. Like nice, solid areas of weight. The drawings I usually hate in mine are not, that's not thought out well. And I usually, usually it's like it comes back to form and lighting. There's something wrong with the form where it's not right or it looks flat and I didn't catch it. I was sloppy with my underdrawing. Or it is a question of uh, not lighting something so it looks kind of lifeless. It's usually something like that. I started to touch on this earlier, but um, I redraw things a lot now. I'm not going to on this because I'm already I've already done enough that I like, but I'm like this this will be fine. Um, but I write I redraw things a lot and and that sucks. So if someone asked about how long this has taken. Uh, not relatively speaking, not that long because I haven't redrawn it. But man, I redraw things sometimes and it it sucks. Like I've done a big long drawing and it went I don't like it and. Those are moments if it's digital, you're kind of, I guess, would be helped because you could maybe see it sooner. But I, I don't know that you'd see it sooner there because it's just a, it's a question of visualization. It's like, am I seeing this image clearly or not? And sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not. And sometimes I think I am and then I get done and I'm like, oh, it looks like crap. And... It's weird. I mean, like there's certain parts of the drawing that look good, so that kind of tricks you into thinking it's working. I'm not a big fan of that. And sometimes you're in the zone, and I've had times I'm super fast and effective, and just things look good. And I think there's nothing really different. It's just psychological. You're visualizing a little better, maybe in a better headspace or something. And that's it. I'm almost done with the train. I'm going to stop and eat lunch. And then I'm going to come back and draw the clouds. And that'll be something that'll probably be a little more fun to look at. And people can look at that. But anyway, train is done. The ground here is going to be shaded because it's going to be like a thunderstorm. I'm going to ink that after lunch. And then I'm going to turn this back on when I'm doing clouds. And I'll see you then. I love you.